Hello, I'm Denshi, and this is how to configure Openbox, the easiest window manager in my opinion. It's a video I've wanted to do for a while because a lot of obvious things aren't really covered in a lot of Openbox tutorials that I've seen. So I hope this video clears it up for anyone who's new to the world of window managers. I think Openbox is the best thing to start from if you're just using a you know desktop environment and you want something relatively easy to configure and use. So I'm gonna break this down into simple steps. Let's begin with the packages needed, and I'm gonna you know talk about each one of them and how to use them and how to configure them. And we're basically gonna progressively build a desktop. The one thing I didn't mention here is a wallpaper because you don't really need a wallpaper, but then again, you don't really need Pycom, now do you? So I'll touch on that right now. So first thing you'll notice about Openbox is that it's a completely black screen when you first get to it after you've installed well, Openbox and a display manager. Right click and there will be a menu, but it won't look like this. It will look very bland and boring because it doesn't have any of the cool programs. Basically, try to find something that can open a trim there should be a link to Xterm, but if you don't have Xterm installed, then install that by going Control Alt F2 and then opening up a menu and doing all that. But basically, the first thing you're going to want to do to set a wallpaper is run the program called Nitrogen. And you're going to want to install that as well. So that's just yay dash has Nitrogen, and that will install Nitrogen. I already have it installed though. So Nitrogen, and it's a program that allows you to add files for wallpapers and stuff. So if I were to let's say open Firefox, and I'm going to search for something like I don't know Arch. Linux wallpaper or whatever, something really tacky and like, by the way, I use Arch, like that kind of thing. 1920 by 1200. All right. I can go and save this, let's say to my, yeah, my downloads. I'll save it as arch.png. And if I want to have nitrogen scan all the files there, I can do preferences, add a directory, go to my downloads and select that as a directory. Click OK. And that file, all the files of my downloads will show up. So there, there it is right there. Click apply. And that will, you know, not fill up my screen because you haven't configured it right. So I can go, uh, uh, scale this to scaled, and there you go. It now probably fills up my screen. Although I should probably do centered so it doesn't squeeze it. There you go. So that's pretty good. So nitrogen sets your wallpaper. Once you've stopped running that, it doesn't stop showing the wallpaper. Although that wallpaper should be set on an auto start, and I'll show how to do that later. Let's begin with one of the most obvious things, which is your keyboard layout. You can do set x. KB map, and then your country code. So in my case, IT, so that's set that to the Italian layout. Uh, then we're going to want to install obconf and LX appearance. Or the, although actually all you really need is LX appearance and obconf, but with LX appearance before it. So LX appearance dash obconf. So you want to install those two things. And all they do is install basically LX appearance with a pop plugin called LX appearance with open box support. So you can do LX appearance and you can go here and you can modify things like your GTK theme. So I currently at Wida and stuff. These are from the Gnome extras pack and you can switch between them. So at the moment, I'm just gonna keep the Wida dirt because I like the dark theme. You can change icon themes. Colors are exclusive to LXDE's display manager, which is not what I'm running at the moment. Uh, you can set icon themes to whatever you want. I'll set Papyrus dark, although this may not update everywhere in the system. I'd Wida for mouse cursor, that's the only one I have. Uh, window borders, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the open box plugin because normally you wouldn't be able to configure this kind of stuff if you were just in the regular LX appearance. But thanks to the LX appearance dash opconf plugin, you can do that. So I'm going to set it to just clear looks the regular one. So to keep it a little bit old school. But yeah, you can change things like font and other but this is really something to get into later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to generate that menu. So you see I have this fancy menu with icons and stuff. I'm going to show you how to generate that. So there's a great program. It's called ob menu generator, as you can see. So I'm going to run yay dash s ob menu dash generator. Oh my god, it's taking a while. I wonder why that's, you know, happening. It's because ob menu generator, as you can see, is in the AUR. So I'm not going to install it again because I already have it installed. But if you don't have it installed, then install it. So ob menu generator, you can do dash u to have it automatically update the thing dash p to make it a pipe menu. So basically something where you right click and like, oh, look, there's more things. And then dash c to automatically reconfigure open box with it dash i to give it icons as well. If for some reason you want icons. So just press enter with that. And that has generated a dynamic menu has automatically been generated. So you'll have this all right in just a simple command. We're going to want Plank and Tint2. So Plank is a dock, as you can tell by the name, and Tint2 is a panel. Things for us to either see the programs that are currently running or launch more programs. So I'm just gonna open my terminal again. Yay-S 
plank and tint two. That's how you install them, but I already have them installed. So I'm gonna run plank with uh, an and symbol so that can launch and I can still do other things in the terminal. This is plank, as you can see. It's got a relatively well rudimentary interface. It's just got icons and you know, you click on them and they launch. So for example, Firefox here, it may come with a bunch of other icons. If you don't want an icon on plank, right click and click keep in dock and it will go away once you close that program, as you can see. Now you'll notice with Plank, if you control and right click on it, you can click preferences and you'll have many options. You know, the theme, I've set it to transparent and I set it to automatically zoom in the icon. So I have this icon zoom function. I don't see that happening though. Why aren't they zooming in? Why isn't it transparent? And that's because we need something called a compositor. So that's where a program called PyCon comes in. And I'll touch upon Tint2 later once I'm done with PyCon, but this PyCon is such an important program. A lot of people forget about it. So you can run this program PyCom, I'm gonna run it with the and again. And you'll notice, oh look, the theme applies and it's transparent and I go over it and look, they zoom in. So PyCom automatically composites things. So that means that it basically allows windows to draw over each other and do all that kind of fancy stuff. If I open a new window though, you'll see that it even gave me a fade effect. Yeah, if I open a new window, like a terminal, you'll notice it actually focuses on them. There is a way to configure this and modify all this stuff. I'll keep it default for now. So I'm gonna launch Tint2 now. Tint2, as you can see, is this panel and it's essentially, looks a little bit like Windows. It's got like things showing up on this taskbar and a clock and a place for widgets. So this is my network managing widget that I've got installed. But um, basically, you can configure this by clicking here and it will open up this configuration program where you're allowed to do things like, oh, look at that. I can change the color to different things. I can change the backgrounds. I can go and take the panel and say I want it up here and click apply. And now I have it at the top and I have my task manager at the top and also a cool little dock that I can use. I can do things like go and change the arrangement of things. So I go to panel items and remove that launcher there or I can remove the taskbar entirely, or I can get rid of the system tray, which is what this is, or I can just get rid of the clock, for example, and I can add all the things. I wanna add like a battery indicator. There's my battery indicator, 100% full. I can go and configure the battery indicator here with various things. So that's how you get that working. So the last thing to really configure here is icon packs. I touched upon changing the icon pack. I already changed it, as you can see. Plank is using the papyrus icons. So my favorites are the papyrus ones, but there are various other ones that you can get. So that's the papyrus icon theme. You can also get, I don't know, there's just regular Adwaita that comes with the pack. There's things like uh, Remix or whatever. There's Mac OS looking icons. You can get anything and just search the internet for those or the art wiki and you'll find tons of cool icons to choose. And you can set those in the Alex appearance program by going to icon themes and setting that. We can move on to something new. So more configuration for final things, keybinds and auto start. So I'm going to configure a couple of things. We're going to do Kate dot config. We're going to want to go to open box and rc.xml. So let's say I want to scroll down all the way down here, just ignoring all this configuration stuff for fonts and such. Go by, go down here and there's a keyboard section. So you see it starts with keyboard. So let's say I want to take a key bind and give it something. So I'm just going to copy this key bind and I'm going to break it down for you specifically. Let me copy paste this here and bring it down give it a little bit of space or something. So let's say we want to do W is just the meta key and we want to press I or something. So W I, so that's the meta key and I are the windows key. We're gonna give it the execute name means it's gonna run a command. We can disable startup notify. We can actually, you know, remove that. You can add the command here. So let's say I want to launch not Lust, the file manager, and just close the action and close keybind. This is like HTML where you put a little forward slash after things. So what this little chunk of configuration will do is take the meta key and I, and that will execute the Nautilus command. So if you right click and go to advanced settings, open box and reconfigure open box, and then press the meta key and I, I'll look at that. Nautilus launched because that's what that key binding does. But we're not done with configuration yet. There is something called auto start. So actually we can Kate dot config open box auto start. So it's basically a file that allows us to add auto start things. Every single thing we write here will automatically start at the beginning when open box launches. So let's say we want to start plank, for example. Oh, look at that. I can automatically start plank. I got to put an at after it to make sure it doesn't, you know, stop any of the other programs from launching. Let's say I want to launch nitrogen. So I mentioned nitrogen before it, you know, configures your wallpaper. So at the moment we have this arch one. If I want to take this arch wallpaper and have it be the same when I come back into my system, nitrogen is an option for that. It's called dash dash restore. So whatever you set to your uh, wallpaper before, it will automatically restore that with that command. Then we can run tint2 to make sure the tint2 dock runs. Uh, PyCom, so make sure 
uh, PyCom automatically runs. And uh, I guess we can do set XKB map. I think that's what it is. Yeah, uh, IT to make sure we set our keyboard layout right. So these are some basic configuration tips for OpenBox. The only last thing I have is a thanks for watching and a goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.